grab your lighters, roll that sticky. Folks, we're talking about something that's sweeping the nation right now. It's becoming legal everywhere we look. There's medicinal properties. There's medical legal. That's right. Even our athletes are starting to talk about it. It's that Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol and cabinetiol. Join us. <laughs> Cannabidoil. Damn it. <laughs> so I'm Dan. And I'm Nick, folks. We're old friends dissecting oh, one man. topic at a time. People, technology, media, we've got it all covered. Each discussion here is a deep dive into our unique perspective. The taboo, forbidden subjects, they're all on the chopping block, baby. We don't pander to popular opinion. We might even get a little bit dirty. Warning, this podcast may contain mature language and sexual content and is for infotainment purposes only. So join us. Have a good time. Open up your ear holes because we're going to fondle your follicles. Noticed. Good mm-hmm. in Drinking, drinking blood too. Yeah. <laughs> Keep up the <laughs> My man. Yeah. The life so sucked out from under him. So weed. One. Right? Marijuana. Weed. Oh, geez. I've been researching Chronic. this the whole time and I didn't realize that's the same thing as weed. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> goodness gracious. Huh. I mean, everybody's talking about it. Right now, it's all about the legalization thereof. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Certain states are making it recreational legal. I focus more on the medical legalization. Oh. A whole different thing. So you want to cover the medical realm as well as maybe some of the ailments that it cures? and I do and doesn't cure. Ooh, Ooh. I just cast a large pall over your face and the episode. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Is there anything that I would like to cover? Why? Is there anything you would like to cover? Let's talk about our experiences with it. Whoa. Maybe the legalization aspect and mm-hmm. what it's trying to battle, which I, I think is opioids. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to go. Mm-hmm. I like those directions. We'll start up with what it is. It's, as I pronounced correctly, yeah. it's Delta 9 Tetrahydrocannabinol. Cannabidiol. Cannabidiol. Yeah, that's why they call it CBD sense. or THC. The tetra hydro. Well, the tetra hydro car. Carbon. Pronounce this right. Carbon. Ka- <laughs> Hydrocarbonabinol. That should be the test if someone pulls you over and you're high. <laughs> it's like, say this say word. This, to, you're to fine THC, if you could say it. THC, folks. Yeah. That's the one that makes you feel loopy and it's lethargic. And psycho crazy. reactive. Whoa, psycho reactive. Yeah, my man. So I think and the other the other thing extracted from the plant, which you touched on and I pronounced incorrectly, was cannabid cannabidiol cannabid oil CBD cannabid oil CBD. That's yeah. why we say them in initials, folks. These two things can be extracted from marijuana, and that's the biggies. So they can CBD be is also taken off extracted from marijuana as well as hemp. Hemp. And hemp, I think, is legal nationally, so you're allowed yeah, you can to do anything with hemp. Yeah, who cares, right? It's you why can suck hemp off. You can do whatever the hell you want with hemp, dude. You can take it back and just well, start going to town on some hemp. Question is, but why is, is like hemp legal? Clothing, because there's no. I don't think it's like chemically reactive. I think it's like an inert substance. It's like you can use it to make clothes and stuff, can't you? Hemp was legalized uh, December 2018. The That's farm bill. Oh. Which is why there's a, a, a rush. And I think hemp is legal because it doesn't produce as much THC. It does have THC in it, though? It has a small amount, like 0.3%. percent you kidding. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, cool. But I don't know that you would smoke hemp to get high. No, I feel like you, it's used in fabrics and stuff. Yeah, that's one of the uses. I don't know. And then hemp oil, which I, everybody's putting on everything, right? Same with CBD oil. CBD being more potent, I guess. Well, that's the thing. I bought I bought gummies uh, from Amazon, and did you? It, yeah, it says hemp oil all over it, and then uh, if you have read really closely, it says no CBD, no THC. So I guess you can derive oil 
that is yeah. just like an omega three or like a fatty acid that makes you yeah. lubricated or something. Like your joints are <laughs> swimming with oil. I think it's one of those things. It's like omega, like you just mentioned, omega three fish oil. Where I don't think it's bad for you or good for you. It's just like people swear by it. It's like yeah, ah, uh, you got to put hemp on it. It's like oh, okay. So another big one is CBD oil is like a step up that has some reactive properties, doesn't it? So there's that's the difference between CBD and THC is that THC has this psychoreactive, psychotropic effect that makes it so that Whoa. your focus is distracted and it's a drug. It affects you in a way that can cause you it's to a class not, one drug, folks. Class one can make class you class one being with opioids like heroin. Cocaine is a class one drug. Mm -hmm. So what was the definition of a class one drug? I don't know. The most dangerous kind. No, the, well, there's three. There's three definitions. Three okay. comprising these definitions. Okay. Go ahead. So the drug or other substance has a high potential for abuse, Ooh. not currently accepted medical treatment in the U.S., Ooh. and is lacked uh, lacks acceptable safety under medical supervision. Okay. So it means it's like it hasn't been through trials, it hasn't been proven, and it has an addictive possibility. Possibility. Mm -hmm. Plus THC. Uh, it's uh, like the comparison of CBD to that. CBD doesn't have that psycho uh, reactive property. Right. So CBD has the benefits, the quote unquote benefits, without the psycho. Yeah, without right. the stuff that's going to mess you up mentally. So then the step up would be THC. What um do we know what it physically does to the brain? There are actually um canna cannabinoid receptors within the body. They're uh -huh. all over, like they're built into us. Like it's not like <coughs> like your organs, your cells, everything is ready to accept this THC. Tetrahydrocannabinol. And um <laughs> it, it, it attaches and I believe it I have no idea what it does. <laughs> I assume I, just, I know what it does to you when it, like when it how it you, but I don't feels. know what it does on a on a microscopic level, right? I'm, I, I almost would say it slows everything down. It's like yo, chill. But that's what it does on a macro scale. On a micro scale, I don't a hundred thousand percent know. So I don't no, know that this is medically proven in any which way how it affects you. I believe it's classified as an opioid, so that it affects the it same is. kind of pathways, but not in the. You don't think it is? I don't think it is because I think it's a psycho, like a trippy drug more than a uh, an opioid. Because an opioid, it it blocks um, it. What is it? It keeps serotonin in. Out? It's it's a it's a, um it's not a blocker. What's the opposite of a blocker? Like an opioid will them in. Yeah, it uh, will attach to a channel and keep it active. I, I don't know what the... Uh, facilitator? Opposite of a blocker. Uh, inhibitor? An inhibitor versus a facilitator? Enabler? Is Maybe? I don't know. Uh, this is like weird that I've never heard of this term before. What is it? I don't know. I mean, I think it would come to me readily since I do a podcast. You would think. <laughs> I'm so educated on this. <laughs> I do a podcast. Yeah, sir. You know why I pulled you over? I do a podcast. What's interesting is I think um, big pharma is kind of what keeps hundred percent. So THC this is one of the things that bothers me is that there's there are drugs that are mood altering, and there are drugs that are um, like the heroines. And the other things that make it so that... Extremely addictive. Yeah. And they make you so you don't feel the pain at at any point. So if you're having surgery or something or after surgery, it, it dulls the pain or it makes it so you, it, you don't feel the pain at all. So these things are part of Big Pharma, which prescribes them overly, even if you don't need them. Way overly. And people become more addicted to them than most other things. That's why... Because they're... Because they're physically addictive. I don't think there's any proof that THC is physically addictive. It's more um, habitual and mental addictive. Hmm. So the class one drugs that are mixed with mm -hmm. marijuana or classified with uh, heroin, LSD, marijuana, mescaline, MDMA, GHB. Uh, I don't know what GHB is, is actually. Gamma hydroburic acid. 
Is that some kind of steroid? Turic. Some kind of like hardcore steroid? Or I'm going to have to click on that one. Ecstasy, psychosilpsobin. Okay. Nice. Good, synthetic good marijuana. Song. Uh, Quaaludes. Weed. Have you ever had weed? I don't never. Uh, f- f- weed? Fake weed? Yes, yeah, synthetic, synthetic marijuana. Weed. Hmm. I've never had that before. What is? What is it? It's fake. It's synthetic marijuana. It's like fake marijuana. Does it come in like a vial, or do they give you like a fake plant? I think it was in plant form because you could burn it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what it is is it's like little leaves or something that you burn and breathe in, and it won't show up on a drug test at all because it's not some of the same properties of THC. Okay, we'll come back to that in two seconds. Okay. Good. So there's another one, cot or cathinone and bath salts. Sounds good. So, oh, yeah. shit, weed is up there with all these. It's funny, even um, this started back in the 70s, 60s, 80s, somewhere the war on drugs. Is that Reagan? GHB is the date right ju- drug. Oh, we should have known that. Yeah, we did know that, I think. We're idiots. I think yeah. we did at one point. We must have had something that Burgers. ruined our memories and <laughs> ruined our memories and made us wake up not knowing what happened. Yeah. Um, so interestingly enough, the war on drugs is that Reagan's wife. Yeah, you know about it? Nancy Reagan, one of the president's wife. Nancy, Nancy. So that was like uh, there was a huge uh, crack addiction in the United States in the eighties, I it believe. It, it could be. They said like in the downtown areas, it was like crack was so well, cheap and, and so addictive. Was the and cocaine was the drug. Well, of the, cocaine was the rich person's drug, right? Yeah, but I mean that was way more rampant. I mean you would just be doing coke in bathrooms back then, right? It would be like, hey, we're at the restaurant. That's what every movie cocaine. has told me of the 80s. I'm going to believe them. I'm going to throw on my uh, brightly colored windbreaker and smoke some <sighs> actually snort some coke. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's like I was thinking about marijuana. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So I actually went Ooh. to a uh, a shop that sells oils. It was um, CBD oils in your state. In my state, okay. it was it was interesting because I don't think it's actually legal, except that it was hemp derived. So I think it's more difficult to get a substantial quantity of CBD mm-hmm. and THC in an oil form mm-hmm. from hemp. So, but it's the same thing as you would get from marijuana. So it's like, it's a, it's a the benefits work around. If you're right, yeah. So the the benefits were supposed to be like a cure all. So it was supposed to help your joints, Everything, dude. It helps your sleeping, joints. It helps you sleep, relax, you, anxiety, oh, relax, oh, digestion, any sore body part. You're good, dude. Yeah. Digestion. It, no offense to anyone who's a proponent of these things. That's literally the answer for like snake oil sales. Mm-hmm. Like the things you really can't prove. Like it'll. Not just snake oil, like anything that you take that's like an herbal supplement that's like, oh, this will make you feel Rub it in your eyes. It'll make you see again. <laughs> Don't do that. This will make you feel a little better every day. And you're like, really? And you're like, just do it, man. Just do more and more of it. Do more. And if it's not working, come buy two bottles. Okay, man. You got it. So there was a sample that uh, I did not take did because them? it was CBD and THC combined. But Come on, man. What's going to happen to you? Someone I know that is very close to me did try it, oh, and it did burn like icy hot, and she said that it felt really good. Hmm. So it did help. The problem it's is like, that you're mm-hmm. – it, it's like it gets absorbed through your skin just as much as anything else, and it, you feel the effects of the THC and the CBD. Okay. I did – they did have a tincture – Tincture something like a drop that you put under your tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, put under your tongue. I know about that. Mm-hmm. I know one of my relatives, we'll call them, um, swears by it and puts a drop under their tongue. It uh, makes you feel really good. It didn't have THC Doesn't. in it, so I bought it, and I've tried it a couple times. And I, it does like take the edge off of everything. It makes you feel warm. Yeah, are you sure, 100% sure it's not placebo effect? I need to take it more often and with fake drops to prove clinically. Ah, okay. Because there's a big push right now because everyone's finding out what we're talking about. A lot of these feel-good effects. It's good for your joints. And let's say it is, right? It's, why not legalize it or why not prescribe it or why not I will say people use it? It is Go. unmistakable. That the it does something to you. 
Interesting. You can feel it in your body when it's in there. Hmm. And almost immediately, too. It's like within like minutes, you're like, you're like there's something here. Hmm. A little buzz? Yeah. And it did make me relax, and I slept like a baby. You have two children? Yeah, I slept alongside them. A busy... I could compare to an actual baby. Yes. I was I was going with... Um, <laughs> Anytime you get sleep, do you think you probably sleep like a baby? N- n- no, probably I'm not. I'm trying to disprove you. I'm just saying. Are you sure? I took a mid-afternoon nap, and it was like a two-hour nap, and I woke up and was like, <sighs> I was like one of those two like naps, dude, are yeah. wild. You could have stabbed me through the heart, days. and I would have been like, "That's okay. I'm it's gonna die now. Dude. It's fine." <laughs> I haven't had an afternoon nap in probably a year that's sadness that is the saddest sadness that you can possibly feel until you just said that i gotta gotta schedule a nap (laughs) damn Hmm. so um legalization right now a big thing legalization proving that it does something because there's no clinical medical proof well that's what i was going to get into so a lot of nba players and nfl players who at this point are kind of celebrities and like um they make so much money. They have a following. They have people who listen to them. They're on a platform. That's why anytime they Joe hit Rogan. a woman, like CBD, uh, he sure, loves that him shit too. No, I know. Oh, I know. He's behind all this. He didn't he smoke with Elon Musk? Is that him? He most certainly did. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's that's hilarious. I can still see the little <laughs> clip. I didn't see the video of it. I know. I saw the clip. No, but what I'm going at is like athletes and like. Things are so famous now and so rich that they kind of are their own enterprise and businesses. And they, um, they're they like spokespeople for things now. Well, huh. a lot of NBA and NFL players are pushing for legalization of marijuana for medicinal purposes because they it's for pain relief. Like these guys are going hard, going 24-7. They want to be able to be able to relax, have their joints heal, maybe, you know, be able to stop chronic pain. Chronic back pain is a constant yep, yep. thing. So I did a little digging. Yeah. A lot of scientific research. Minimal to no effect. Really? Minimal to no. I didn't say no, but it's like they do double blind tests and then they do negative tests and then double negative, double positive tests because most people were testing to see if you feel better. And if you think you're going to feel better, you tend to feel better. Hmm. So, and it's hard to test with weed, especially because they don't have a lot of comparatives that make you feel like weed. Um, They've used weed in some of these tests, mm-hmm. but 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 weed may have some of the same ingredients as THC, so they want to try and find something that makes you feel that psycho effect, but doesn't have any of the ingredients in it, and see if you still feel better or not. Oh. Like if you think you were getting weed and you were tricked yeah, into that's it, tricky. And yeah. really tricked into it, it's really hard because there aren't a lot of comparables. Yeah. Um, it's interesting though so that they, the legalization for weed in the NBA is actually banned. CBD is. CBD is not legal. Is not okay. allowed in the NBA, but yeah. it is in the NHL. Is it in the NHL? Yeah, it says except the NHL. I did yeah. not know that. But yeah, NBA and NFL players are fighting for it because they they want to have like pain relief or whatever, or just smoke weed. I'm not. I don't, I'm not blaming them either <laughs> yeah. way. But um, when they do these tests, they find that what was it? Three out of a uh, ten people claim they feel better, but three out of ten people. Of those three out of ten, like they do, because this is over like three thousand people. I read the whole report. It was um, it's a January twenty nineteen, so it's pretty recent. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see if I can find it because I pull, I saved it. Sciencebasedmedicine.org. Great. But they did studies for each issue: chronic pain, thirty nine percent experienced pain reduction. There was an, a net net negative correlation. I'm using the wrong words of it. Thirty uh, percent. Well, those were placebo. I don't know what that means by what you said. Uh, so thirty, they think thirty percent of those people that thought thirty nine of the thirty nine percent that reported chronic pain crap. relief were full of crap. So they they put these things on a scale of zero to ten on what its probable effectiveness is mm-hmm. for all these in things. Yeah, chronic pain got a 0. 0.5 definite increase on one to ten. So 0. 0.5, they can scientifically say actually felt better on a one to ten, half a point. Which is scientifically almost not relevant. I don't know. They did a pain from multiple sclerosis, right? Yeah. 0.8% could be verified. Definitely scientifically without irrefutable evidence on a scale of 1 to 10, 0.8. Weird. So they went through all of these and it's, it's 
greater than zero, but it's not quite even one in most of these categories. And they, they're not saying that it doesn't help, but they're not saying that they can prove it does. But does it have any harmful effects? Correct. Well, not harmful to the multiple sclero- sclerosis. I'm picking. Thank you. Or like people with um, hunger issues and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So what they're finding is that it may not actually 100% or even 50% help these people. But what they also are saying is that it, it isn't hurting them. And if it is a placebo effect, maybe that's not bad either. Yeah. Well, the opioid. We need to do more research. And do you know why we can't do more research? Why can't we? Because it's a class one drug. You're not allowed to test. Labs and stuff aren't allowed to test with it. Wow. They have to get special permits. It costs way more money. They have to pay through the nose just to get the the item in to test with it. And then there's all these weird permissions to be able to test on individuals, especially a blind test. You can't blind test a class one drug on someone. Think about it. Why would you be able to? Wouldn't make sense. So yeah, you get them addicted. Exactly. Hmm. So this all this whole thing stems from the stigma of it being a class one super addictive, super powerful, super nasty drug that I don't believe anyone's ever overdosed on, correct? Can you overdose on C B D? Or THC. Go right to the higher drug one. Either, either or. I think you'd have to smoke your body weight, right? I'm, I'm gonna. I'm just curious. See. I I read somewhere you'd have to smoke your body weight to to die of overdose. Uh, let's see, two, 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 two. which is interesting because you'd have to take four Percocets in five minutes to die. Like, yeah, you know I mean? I'm gonna give you opioid stats. Oh, so you got the opioid epidemic as of 2017, it said that. Uh, about 47,000 people died from overdosing on opioids. I think this is in the United States. Yeah, in 2016. In one year. That's bad. I actually thought it might be worse. Well, that's... It's bad. It's, it's bad, bad. It's yeah. Not, it's, it's, I thought it might be worse. I really thought it was going to be like in the... Like 200,000 people died. But I'm, well, like how many people actually... There's like about 2 million people that have a disorder using opioids... And there's about a million people using heroin. Right, which is wild. There's about 130 people that die every day from the drug. And there's only like 12 million that actually have this like available to them as a prescription or are users of it. So considering – well, there's like 300 million people. And the ones who have a prescription probably aren't dying from it. I don't know because 2 million people misuse the prescription. Did it say that? Yeah. Okay. So that there's, uh, I would say it's a considerable number, considering you're not like you're thinking about the entire U.S., but probably ninety. Wait, what is eleven percent? It's like ninety five percent of the United States is not using prescribed medications. Well, prescribed medications. Yeah, to clarify. To clarify. So there's, I mean, I don't know. Something happened. Something bad happened. I don't know what's happening here. Something bad happened. Folks. Hold on. Um. What we're getting at is that even through all our research, we all knew it going into it, but um, marijuana isn't as powerful as we would like to think, but also as we would not like to think. Like it isn't a class one drug. Let's be honest. So CBD oil has no known report of fatal overdose. Damn. How about THC? Let's research that too. Let's research that too. You got the quicker keyboard. You're the man with the fingertips. This guy's got magic fingertips, everyone at home. You can come over to your house and give you a little uh, ropey dope. Drum roll. Oh. I'm nervous. I'm feeling like five people. Uh, and I'm guessing there's a ton of THC related deaths. I love this. The CDC gives home. like the most like uh, neutral response. Oh, dude, it's CDC is awesome. Uh, a fatal overdose is unlikely, but the effects of THC may cause you to have a reaction, uh-huh. which I then just saying, leads to unintentional lead injury to as motor okay. vehicle crash, fall, or poisoning. I was saying that as he was clicking it, folks. Yeah. Check here. So I don't think that it's possible to actually die from THC. It's which not. Isn't that interesting? Why is it banned other than the fact Class that one. it has to be used in conjunction with something else to cause it to be fatal? 
Now, I didn't get into this research. Is this because um, more African-Americans use marijuana? Are you saying this is like... Yeah, a racist uh, thing. It could be. It was like cocaine when it was being used by popular people. It was like all the rage. And then once those people died from cocaine, it's like, (laughs) let's ban the stuff. Sure. I mean, I think it was banned all along, but it was like... It probably was, but it became a reality. Let's let's crack down on these drugs. Yeah. The realism that we need to do something about it. Sure. Marijuana, on the other hand, didn't have a lot of debts. No. Plus, it's been used for literally centuries. Like, I guarantee, like, the the burning bush... Native Americans, right? Yeah. The burning bush Uh, was probably a marijuana. Moses saw some snakes. Yeah. Yeah, He probably was. Like, Why else Whoa. would you write about a burning bush? <laughs> Some snakes are turning into a staff, bro. Wow. Moses, knock it off. And especially if you wanted to, like, if you wanted to do that to a crowd of people, like, hotbox the entire crowd, and it was like, burn some bushes <laughs> and then, like, let it Dude. waft over them. That would be wild. That actually. would be a, especially if you were if you had a band in medieval times that were playing like the lute and the lyre, and you set some bush off near them and then started playing and got yeah. a couple audience into it. That would be wild. Everyone would be into it. So you want to talk about how many states? There's mm-hmm. medical marijuana in 33 states, I believe, including Washington D.C. And then yes. recreational marijuana. Wait, you said 33 states? Yeah, for medical marijuana. Yeah. Recreational. I wrote them 10. down. Mm-hmm. Oh, you have a list? So California is probably the most notable one. I think Nevada has had it right. the longest, well, maybe. I'm just, I think it was alphabetical. Oh, shit. This is literally when I started looking for the USB. Oh, yeah? Alaska? Alaska Arizona. had it first. No, California had it first, 1996. And then oh, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, which seems weird. Yeah. Delaware. I can Florida, see that. Yeah. D.C. Isn't Jersey yet? Oh, I didn't get that far. Florida, Hawaii, Illinois, Louisiana? Medical marijuana? God yeah. bless them. Maine, Maryland, Maryland, and Massachusetts. That's wild. Michigan, Minnesota, yep. Missouri, and then I stopped Montana, writing them down because Nevada, I, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Jersey. North North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, 2016, ah, Rhode Island. Yeah, I was just going to say we're getting there, right? Utah, Vermont, Washington, West Virginia. So that's. That's a considerable number. I think the key is that the recreational use. So the one thing that would bother me if it was recreationally legal to smoke marijuana in public places, which I don't know what the definition is of recreational marijuana. I need to look that up. But if it were legal to smoke and to influence other people who are not party to what you're doing, that should be illegal like i don't want to be forced to smoke marijuana with somebody else who's doing it around me i think the recreational use is has to do with the amount that you can carry with you and without prescription correct it's a there's a a weight amount yeah and it varies from state to state like how many Uh, how you can grow how much you can have it also makes sense if you compare it to alcohol is its best comparison yeah. It's, a, it's it's actually a good comparison. It's terrible in that you can overdose on alcohol pretty quickly. You can't overdose on marijuana at all. But both lead to impaired driving. Both are fairly like mentally addictive. Both lead to some sort of impairment or another. And both lead to sitting on the couch watching cartoons. Does that make sense? Yeah. So and Eating food that you wouldn't normally otherwise eat. Go ahead. Munchies. 100% real. Yeah. 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 100%. Uh, recreational cannabis, 20, 21 years or older, and it is illegal to consume, smoke, eat, or vape in public. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's reasonable. It's also illegal to drink in public. So again, another drinking comparison. Yes. And it's then also, there's also drinking. The amount of beers you can buy in a store or liquor you can buy is prohibited, as it should be probably with marijuana. I, I don't disagree with those rules. Hmm. You can literally go back into the store and buy it again, but... <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. If it's sold in a vial, I don't know how much that will mess you up. If you were to take THC in an oil form, who you they have that. It's just a higher percentage. So now where I used to work, I won't name names, but um, they used to smoke at work mm-hmm. out of the vape pens. Mm-hmm. 
but they would buy oil to go into the vape pen. Yep. And they would always talk about the percentage THC, where they got it from. And the they would one. go for the highest THC. Of course. Yeah. Well, unless there was like cool indica or what's the other one? Two strains. Uh, st- st- Sat- 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 yeah, Sat- Sat- Sativa. Sativa, hmm. whatever it is. I forget what it's called. You yeah. can tell we're big weed. Big yeah, we're huge into it. We're big weedos, folks. So there's like two strains, essentially. Two major strains. I think there's a third strain, but it's like up and coming. Hybrid? I think it's yeah. a mix of the two or something. Yeah. So you're relating into like if you're growing the stuff or you're deriving oils from the stuff, it matters what you're trying to grow, what strain, and then how much you can derive from that. I may or may not know someone who grows acres of it and has for the past 15 years. Who? And sells, formerly illegally, now legally, to government contracts. Nice. To states that will sell it. So, that's one of the curious things, is that if you have states that are side by side, that Mm -hmm. both have legal use of marijuana... You can't grow marijuana in one state and transport it to the other state because technically between states, there's a federal border. There's federal land between each one. Since it's not nationally legalized, it's illegal to carry it on that one little strip of land across state borders. So did you know a store that sells strictly marijuana in a marijuana recreational legal state can make as much money as it can? FDIC of the banks. Yeah. Can't take their money. What does insure it? What is that? Wait, say that again. FDIC. Yeah. Federally deposit Mm -hmm. insurance. Up to whatever the number is. 100,000. Is that our. It depends on. There's like NUCA or like. I think it's 100, 150 to 250, depending on $1,000. Okay. Either way. Anyway, um, they won't. The banks will not support these businesses. So they don't ensure that their money is safe. Is that's what Correct. the banking laws are talking about now? Correct. So they're it's saying if their if their income is derived from marijuana sales in any form, strictly marijuana sales, it mm-hmm. invalidates the amount that Let's they just earn. Say strictly because you get into weird muddy waters if it's some and some not. Let's just say a company just sells it and they're like, yeah, that's what we sell. They can't bring it to the bank. Interesting. Now, I don't know that a bank won't take it, hold it, use it, and whatever, and it's just not insured, or a bank will straight up refuse it. I haven't heard the actual details, which is wild. It might vary bank to bank. It might vary branch to branch. Why would a bank say no to money? What I will say that we skipped over, um, I did some research here. Um, African American is 3.73 times more likely to be arrested than a white person for the same amount of mar- marijuana use. In America, 52% of all drug arrests that tie up our courts and jails are for marijuana. Hmm. 52%. That's an insane amount. That's over half. And that's for, like, essentially drinking a beer a little bit. That and, like, the sentences, like, the ridiculous sentences that are handed oh, out for other crimes that are much worse than drug use for marijuana. The marijuana drugs are... are they're, they're being sentenced to, like, years just because they are carrying it. Right. Not even – it's one thing if you're smuggling it into the country from Mexico and trying to sell a billion dollars worth. Like, yep. That's probably a crime. I'm not going to disagree with that. You're carrying around a joint and you get pat down and someone finds it. Um, let's see. Oh, last one. Wasted time and money. Marijuana enforcement between jailing, court sentences, everything else. $3.6 billion a year to fight it, to keep it off our streets. Wow. To put those sinners in jail. Probably not the best use of $3.6 billion. Yeah. It is good to see that when a state legalizes their marijuana for, I think, recreational use or medical use that they absolve the people that are in jail they just like say like you're free now and then they'll scrub that record and say you were never convicted of anything is that in every state i don't i think they have to pass legislation that's like a follow-up right, they pass laws okay but it's they it's should. good to see this is like if you well, were yeah retroactive absolution 
Correct. Absolution. Oof. Absolution. So the absolutely. did you get a absolute, figure on the absolutely. absolutely absolution? Did you get a no, figure on the number? the number of sales? The billions of dollars? No, I'm digging ice out of a cup to put in my glass. Oh, great. So the numbers that I've seen are like 5 to 15 billion. So much more tan than you. <laughs> I don't know why. I was outside for like a straight weekend. I don't know why oh I'm so God. pale. This guy was outside for one weekend. Holy Jesus. Anyway, guys, get some numbers <laughs> on what? It was at night, but uh, it's okay. Um, so like the numbers I see are like joking, 6 billion, but I've heard like 10 billion. Wait, the number of what? Uh, legal recreational medical cannabis sold in 2017. Oh, wow. I think in 2000. 2000- that's recreational or medical or both? That combines them. Oh, okay, fine. Which okay. is on par for the amount spent for Netflix. That's <laughs> <laughs> Netflix and literally chill. chill so yeah. That's a good chill right there. I like that. So the projections are actually insane. And well, and that's only in how many do we know how many states are recreational marijuana compliant? I know we just went thirty three states medical. Ten or recreationally compliant. Ten? Yeah. Do you have them? Because I really am curious because I know it was um, Alaska. I know it was California. I know it was like Colorado. I think Nevada. I think Florida. I can find find the map. Can't find the map. Relax. Take your time. Take your time here. You need some – you need a chill pill. I know what you need. It was one of the first things I searched for. Oh, I must exit out. Yeah. Washington, Oregon, California, Alaska, Nevada. Colorado, Michigan, Nevada, Maine, Michigan? Vermont, Maine and Vermont. What the hell? Not going Florida. White, white states. Not Florida. Wait, Maine and Vermont have recreational mm-hmm. marijuana. Mm-hmm. Really? That's weird. And DC has uh, recreational too. DC does as well. Yeah, it's it's politicians. So scaling it up, so the 2016 number is like six billion. 17 is 2017 is like 8 billion and 2018 is like 10 billion. They're projecting it out to be like a growing industry by about 30% almost every year, kind of maybe 20% if you're going to scale it out. Yeah, but it's going to grow to be like a $25 billion industry, they think. So it's still got like a lot of companies are buying domains, they're buying the rights to gummies. Mm -hmm. The individual I mentioned, he's in rights to a company that does strictly edibles. They're called like. Edible, I forget the name of the company. I'm not going to drop them anyway. But, hmm. but like they're using his home, not homegrown because it's like a, it's a mass production. Yeah, yeah. They're using this stuff to make their edibles, and they're using like it's broken down where even the guys from the work I used to be at would bring in their stuff, and it would be like this is 80 percent satvia, 20 percent indica, and they're like, oh, and they'd be like, I've never tried that before. Oh, bro, it's called blueberry bust. That's the other thing. We didn't even talk about the names for these drugs, which is the coolest thing. Oh, ever. yeah. You got some names? Well, let's talk about let's edibles really quick. Okay, go ahead. Edible brownies is the form that I've had. I know. Have you? Yes. Have you? <laughs> is the form that I have had. Did you accidentally make them with the wrong amount? <laughs> I let somebody else who is a seasoned veteran make them, make the oils, and oh, then – no. I don't know if they well, gave us that the oil. Substance. Let's go with that. Because so marijuana is usually a leaf. You smoke it. You, you, from what I've heard. I don't know how they distill because it. I don't remember. Soluble. So it's fat soluble. Yeah. You have to actually bake it into something that has fat also. Butter but and oil. Vegetable butter oil. is the number one. Oil, butter. You have to cook it into those things. So the THC is activated and infused into the fat soluble substance. That substance is then placed into the food i.e. anything that uses butter, anything that uses oil, anything that uses whatever's fat soluble. Anything mm-hmm. you're mixing right in there, folks. And you cook it in. And, and it's dangerous. You use a certain part per million. Or yeah. Or whatever. It's dangerous because you don't realize how, how delayed the reaction is and how much you're eating. You smoke any drug. <clears throat> it's usually in your bloodstream right away within like three to five mm-hmm. minutes. It's probably less than that. Because it goes to your lungs, your lungs direct flow with the blood. I mean, your blood takes yeah. it away, and all of a sudden, it's through your body. Yeah. When you eat something, it can sit on top of food you already ate, drinks you already had, and it's just chilling in there. It's just chilling. You're having a good time. Yeah. You're dancing. You're singing. You're having a good time. You're thinking you need more. 
15 minutes later, you're thinking you need more. Nothing's happening. 15 minutes later, your body finally gets to, fine, I'm here to digest it. Whoa. But you've already had more. In which case, your body's like, whoa, whoa. In which case, you might be running your Mario Kart character into the wow, wall. Wow. Yes. Five minutes. Great. <laughs> just, just. <laughs> Do you remember Spider Man? There's a yeah. Spider Man running around. Uh-uh. No. Okay. <laughs> what I, anyway, you could be at a social event, a party at a house. You will not you know. Totally realize anybody else it. is there. Oh man, just playing Mario Kart for way too long, driving into a wall over and over and over. This, yeah, it's great, but a lot, <laughs> and then it lasts for far too long. It lasted at least a day. Oh, at least a day. When you do way too much edibles? Yeah. Because that's the other thing with this stuff. It's because it's fat soluble. It goes in your bloodstream. It does its thing. It, it acts on you psychologically. It's psycho... Reactive. Whatever the word, reactively. And then the residuals, it stays in your system. It can actually it be absorbed in your own fat cells. Yeah. It is. And I it used really to... Is. And that's why... <laughs> one of my girlfriends... One... Um, I, I used to say her mom did... A lot of weed when she was in college, like back way, so way when. Fat, and when she, she sweated, was, you could smell her. <laughs> okay. I should say That's she's getting know. high right now. Like I would say, like your mom oh. is getting high right now because she's burning some fat, and she'd be like, uh. she'd be so pleasant and happy. I'd be like, it's because she's high. Not possible. Really, Your body will eventually metabolize it. Yeah, because it just doesn't stay around forever. It's not like an acid trip where it can st- store dormant in your cells for however long. An acid trip but, can? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. If you do acid, it can stay dormant in different parts of your, like if it gets caught in, I don't know where it gets caught. Cause I don't know the, the, the thing, but you can have an acid flashback. It's called, and it's going to happen years later. Oh, that's frightening. Yeah. Well, that's what, um, true detective season one. That's an acid flashback. Woody Harrelson has when he's driving. I believe it's Woody Harrelson, right? Something other. That sounds about no, it's right. Matthew McConaughey. No, it's Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. Yeah, yes, McConaughey. It's it's a, it says it is a real thing, but it's rare. Okay, it's rare. I mean, I assume. Ooh, hiding in the fat or in the spine? Interesting. Oh, that one's probably a spine hider. Come on, you crack your spine the wrong way, and boom, and, and you're just like flashback. Uh-huh. Oh, you're just driving your kids to school. Everyone's screaming. They're hitting each other with teddy bears and things. And you're just turning around and seeing the weirdest things in the world. And they're still screaming, hitting each other with teddy bears. But that's not what you see. And you're driving a motor vehicle 60 miles an hour down a highway. And you keep hearing the children laugh. And they're hitting each other with something. But you don't know what's going on. So you just keep driving. And you're seeing snakes everywhere. And you're like, got to make it to school. Just get to school. And they're still screaming and like you're looking back for like a full 20 seconds while you're driving. And they're like, look at the road. And you're like, huh? Anyway, just imagining a great scenario. Don't do acid. Great edible names. Do you have a list of great edibles? No. No. Uh, Pineapple Delight Bites. Toast Crunch. That's cool. Uh, Mango Maui Wowie Fruit Leather. These are real names. Do you have a list of Do you have a list of um actual marijuana strains, famous names? Because that would be more interesting. Because I think we all recognize those, like Sour Diesel and like Purple Haze, oh, Pineapple Express, Oil, Number One, Pineapple Express, like all these things. Naming these things is so badass. Let me see. Well, there's a lot of a lot of Oh, of oh. course, but like, it's just, it's there's the thousands of them. Oh my god! I meant famous. Is there a way you can power it down to like the famous list? I don't know that I can. It's Hindu Kush. Twenty names. Hindu Kush. Yeah, I don't. That's I, pretty cool. Let me see. See, you're perusing the list. I am perusing the, the list. Top, I'm trying to get like the top, top one. Marijuana strand list or something. Uh, oh yes. Top. Yeah, there we go. Now that's what we're talking about. Uh, and asked me if I was over twenty one. I said no. Initially, I was like, shit, it's gonna ban me forever. <laughs> they got me. <laughs> They're gonna get me. Oh yeah. I like so, you okay. Be like, yes, I know. Go uh, I'm gonna try to skim over this list of like a hundred. Yeah, uh, yeah, famous ones. Nine though. pound hammer. I've never heard about, but no, I never heard that. Bubble that's Kush, cool. blueberry, Barry White. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, Barry White. That's awesome. No, I never heard that. That's Granddaddy cool. Purple. Hindu Kush is on there. I've heard that. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, Northern Lights, Obama Kush. Yeah. I know what Northern Lights is. <laughs> yeah. I know what Northern Lights is. What was the other one? Uh, Obama Kush, apparently. Obama Kush? They made, <laughs> oh man, right after number 51. What did they make? Purple Urkel. <laughs> That's cool. And apparently, names are good. Skittles with Z's. Have you ever heard of that one? No. Oh, no, that sounds interesting. I've heard of Banana sounds OG. Mm-mm, no. That sounds cool. Chemdog or Chernobyl? <laughs> Named it Chernobyl. I just started watching Chernobyl. It's a little darker now. Uh, there's the Pineapple Express. Mm-hmm. Let me see Snoop's Dream. Snoop. Oh wow. Uh, let me see Tangerine Dream. Oh, heard before. Ah, oh, is that what that's? Train wreck. Train wreck. That's a bit hard. Acapulco Gold. That's cool. I think I've heard that. Alaskan Thunderfuck. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Like let me that. see. Uh, Ghost Train Haze, Green mm-hmm. Crack, uh, Panama Red. Def- I think you've heard, heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Purple Haze, obviously. Purple Haze. And Purple uh, Haze up in my uh, brain. Yeah. And I think that's Everybody's that covers a lot of them. Maui Wowie. Maui Wowie. There you go. Yeah. The um. Do you think we could figure out the levels of marijuana on their street name? So there's swag. I think swag's the worst, or dirt. I think dirt is the worst you can buy. Dirt, like dirt, yeah. dirt, dirt, dirt weed. Type in dirt, yeah. Swag, um, Mondo, Kush, and like you got to break down the levels. That'd be great. Cool. So that is one thing that my one of my parents said is that the potency of THC today is absurd compared to what it was yeah, back then. Up so much. I want to see what, if there's an actual number. Yeah, you check it out while I look up uh, what's my call. I'm gonna give everyone the, the breakdown of the, the names. Levels weed. I hate when stories don't bulletize things to feed it to me directly. I know. Dank weed. Dank. That's awesome. It's weird because I'm I'm actually been investing in these different companies. Have you been? Yeah, I think it's actually going to Which be one edibles or like what? I think it would. It's a variety. I like the I like oils actually. I think oils make more sense than anything. Combination of vaping and oils. Also, I think it that will take sense. some of like in a recession people drink a lot more alcohol, more beer. I think it's going to take some of that when we hit a recession, it's going to be like recession proof. Wow, oh, okay. THC mm-hmm. can be as low as 10% in your weed. That's like dirt and swag. Um, yep. It can go as high as 60%, but I feel like that's not in a plant, dude. There's no way. I think 30 is high as you can get in a physical plant. I'm making this up based on nothing, but just I'm trying to remember. Um, mid-grade weed. So what the kids in our high school used to buy was um, KB. KB? Kind bud. Kind bud. Kind, but yeah, that's what we, that, that's what it was called. I wish like yeah, I was, was educated on this, so I could like make good financial I used decisions. To be more educated. Uh, well, you don't have to. This is a different world. OG Kush. Train. They did say from ninety five to two thousand fifteen, the THC rose from like four percent to like twelve percent. So it's like three times more THC. A little better, yeah. Some ridiculous amount, and that's only two thousand fifteen. Exactly. I'm sure there's like now we've probably yeah capitalism is gonna like just like absolutely oh, murder yeah. it. Royal gorilla, fat banana, purple queen, amnesia haze. Ah, oh, dude, royal cookies on a matica. Some of these are wild. Blue cheese on a matica. I think I actually know what that is. Dance world. So what we're getting at is like there's also a nostalgia element we're getting into right now. It's very we unique. We're going to get too personal about us personally, but we went to a high school with a lot of like white dudes who had money. Would you say? Yeah. Above. So white dudes with money when they're bored in high school, guess what they do? Waste Smoke money on the drugs. Kind of, yeah. Oh yeah, they do. Um, the most famous story I can remember is that there was a kid in our school, uh, dumbass, who is a known pothead. Like that's no big deal. He literally during. Between third and fourth period, he went outside, right, lit up and smoked right outside of, like, a door, right? Yeah. Well, this door 
was directly below a vent that led to the, the intake. discipline's office. Yeah. It went right into his office. And he smelled it, came out, found them with weed, and suspended. No, he expelled them. He expelled them. They, yeah, they, I never he saw did. him after that. There's two I guys. I saw him after that. Yeah, I think this is going to sound weird. I think the other guy remained in school somehow because maybe he didn't have the weed in his hand. He was smart enough to ditch it. No, he was not smart enough anything because I, within six months, he was suspended for weed anyway. Hmm. I think he did it again, this individual who may or may not have taken French. Run around my mind. I can't re- Give me a... Uh, BVB? No, BVM? Run around Magus? DVDA? No. <laughs> it's a different no, acronym. Christ, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a totally different acronym. <laughs> anyway, um, what we're getting at is like... Oh, I think I do. Yeah, yeah, I think you do. He wore a hemp necklace. Like a beach <laughs> outfit. I think he did. Oh, yeah. Okay, he probably had dreadlocks. So I think he had dreadlocks. Like dude with dreadlocks. Anyway, like you, weed's funny because it's it's innocuous it's cultural. It's it is, and it's also it's a thing with an age group. Like you, you start to get into it early. Is that a thing? I don't know. It's always like, like it's the gateway you know, drug. Like, like well, the reason it's the gateway is because it's a. It's not like why would heroin be the gateway drug? Yeah, Can you imagine that. <laughs> Yo, I got I, something for you. I'm gonna What'll overdose it do? right away. Knock you unconscious for 28 hours and you won't be able to move. Cool, Ooh, man. Yeah. I'm 14. Let's do it. Like, it wouldn't be a gateway drug. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, causality. I mean, heroin can't be a gateway drug. That's the stupidest sentence ever. Yeah. Marijuana might be a gateway drug because it's easy to do and it's fairly recreational. It's so widespread. It you wanna, right, right. It's widespread. What I think happens is late grade school, high school is when your friends start getting into it or people you know start getting into it or someone gets into it. And then it kind of spreads a little bit because it's kind of – it's like a cool thing to do. You can get away with it if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Like I said, if you did heroin you know, with your friends in a car at like 8.30 when you can finally drive. That just doesn't sound Your cool. parents might – well, forget that, the logistics of it. All right, um, I got to be home by nine thirty. You, what are you going to do? Walk into your parents' house with the needle in your arm and talk to them for a few minutes? That's probably not going to happen. You're probably unconscious somewhere, drooling. Like, do you know what I mean? For a day. I've never done Here's heroin, this. but I know people who okay. have. I don't really understand the effects of it. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can explain, like, how I'm debilitating guessing, is it? I think I feel like it just. It makes you high as shit and then you need to like – I think you're out of it for a while, like a long while, like 12 hours. You couldn't do that as a 16-year-old sneaking into home late at night True. trying to sneak past your parents. You'd be dead on the front lawn. Like do you know what I mean? So like weed offers this thing where you can kind of pass it off. I'm not high. I'm not this. Like you know what I mean? We didn't even get into what high is. What is high? I've – um. While high, or simulating high in my brain, I I figured out what high was a few times. It was being physically, like your mind has an eye where you can see everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. The id inside yourself that literally is like the monitor of everything. Like you see what you're doing with your hands. Don't you have a tattoo associated with this? No, no. no. I thought the... Led Zeppelin, the triangle with no, the circle was the for, mind's eye. No, it's just for no, it's just for um the drummer and the bass player. One of which was Valentine Beer, one of which was a Celtic f- symbol for family. Okay. Third eye is what you're thinking of, which will be tool. a cool tattoo. Yeah, tool. Anyway, there's this part of your brain that kind of watches over everything. It observes everything. It's like the control tower. Yeah. What happens is it operates at the same speed. But everything else is slowed down, if that makes sense. No, but that's so okay. So your ability to see things in real time slows down. Your ability to hear things in real time slows down. Your ability to experience time slows down. But the part inside of you that's you is the same speed. I think So you're looking at everything, and everything looks slow because you're able to move at regular speed, and you're like, whoa, this is crazy. And then you hear music or something like you hear an auditory response and you can hear it louder. You can focus on it more because it's slowed down. 
you're like you're more engaged Whoa. in whatever yeah, you're doing because no matter what you look at it's kind of cool you're like damn dude i can really focus on this but it's you're focusing on so many things in like slow time that you're like yeah oh yeah whoa your fingers yeah man so i'll talk about enough. like mushrooms really quick Ooh, interesting for someone who had done shrooms before a person i know very dearly mm -hmm. they described it as like if you're looking at like a textbook like a so like a biology book it's like the, the images that you see are like real things like you feel those images like if they were like if you were to read that bit page like not on shrooms like it would just be a, a thing you're reading but on yeah. shrooms it's like in front of you in 3d and you're watching it move even though it's just an image like you understand more about it that's an interesting way to put it and i don't disagree i don't know that i can prove what you're saying but i mm -hmm. don't disagree i think marijuana is a similar thing maybe not as intense as yeah sure maybe the gateway is more like the uh like our ancestors had like a gateway to like see other things. Like a lot of people say it's like a gateway to like another plane or something. I don't sure. necessarily believe that, but it's a different Bullshit. perception. Does alter perception. <sighs> we talk about Canadian legalization. Sure. I think they just did uh, last year. Yeah. So they did it last year, um, and they're – I don't know if I'm going to talk about the specific companies. Like I know a lot about the companies because I've been investing in stock. Oh, in Canadian stock? Canadian stock. Oh, Heritage, man. man. So, mm. yeah, there's like – let's see. Aurora Cannabis, Afria, uh, CGC, which is Canopy Growth Corporation. And like all of these companies, even though I don't think they're located in a prime – tropical zone location. for growing weed they're all like they're not and they're not most of the ones in canada are not but it was the first one to actually like entire nation to legalize it so they have an advantage of being the first one with a foot in the door and like generating income to gain more money and like expand so a lot of these places are making it so that they have their own like grow houses and like uh, oil de like deriving things deriving services right. and they're making their own products so like the products are getting like more and more in depth and then they're starting to buy up places that are being legalized like floridian dispensaries they're starting to buy those up places that are growing weed they're buying those up so it's they're spreading slowly into the u.s and the u.s while legalizing it they also have their own they're called uh, msos or multi-state operators they're trying to like have uh, a vertical integration which means you're growing it and you're also selling it and then selling you're it. deriving different forms of it uh, you're doing all tiers yeah you're not just growing it you're not just this you're selling it you're deriving things you're selling it in derivatives you're doing edibles mm -hmm. you're doing everything sure. yeah. and you have to get licenses to do all this in all the different stages so like all the states are controlling how much is being produced and how much is being grown and sold and all that stuff which is is good but it's becoming like it's going to be a battle. So I like in my personal it's view, business. it's yeah, it's going to be a huge business, and it's going to get legalized nationally once we realize that the Canadians it has to. It's the money is going to be going outside of states. Yes. So we talked about thirty three states have it. Well, the five states that don't are going to lose money like dumbasses. Yeah, since it's going to be like twenty billion dollars a year, if you're taxing yeah. that at like. What's the state tax? Like five to ten percent, probably ten percent ish. Well, sure. Yeah, you're going to be losing out on five. like fifty million dollars or something like that. Damn, for free. Yeah. Now here's the real question: If every state legalizes it, does the federal government at that point have to? I don't think so. That's why I don't think so. It's weird can you, because can you mail THC? No, you can't cross state oh, lines. Oh my god! You can't you can't buy it on Amazon. So that's the one thing is when I bought those hemp oil gummies, I don't think it was legally available to be bought on Amazon because it'd be across state lines in most cases. That's and hemp, Texas, you said. yeah. Well, hemp, hemp derived CBD is is nationally acceptable. But that's what I mean because oh, if it was from derived from THC, you wouldn't yeah. been able to buy it. But I don't know if there's legal implications that Amazon would have to monitor and they don't want to no they don't want to do any work 
They just want to swim in money. Hmm. So that's what my uh, weed delivery. They do have like mail weed. Like you can mail it in in state. Hmm. They have. Uh, I think they talk about like the margins on that. The amount of money you can make off that is lower, so it's not as advantageous, uh, and you're not creating a brand. Like a lot of the ones that I invest in, look when you look at their product, it doesn't look right. hokey. So like the store that I went to. The person selling it to me was like a lady that was like 60 years old and was like, oh, this is going to be great for this and that. And I was just like, you're ruining like the, the my expectations because some of the product that I've seen, it looks like it's a, like a medicinal product. Like if you were going to like a grocery store and it'd be on the shelf, you would be like, this is – and it's obvious what it is. But you're not well done professional. Yeah, you're not allowed to state that it like it heals you in any way. You're not allowed to say this is marijuana. But like the way they package it, it's like a like a, a very like sophisticated artistic leaf. And then it's like, oh I know what this is. Like you you inherently understand what it is. Oh, I follow you. I know what's going on. But they could definitely put that in. I think they already have it in CVSs. So like you would see that on the shelf, you buy it. Awesome. It's interesting we're talking about something that by the time this podcast comes out could be legal everywhere yes <laughs> it's gonna be nine months from now and 12 months anyway um another interesting thing is like 10 years ago to buy marijuana you might have to go into an alleyway and meet a guy your friend knows to buy it mm -hmm. and you don't see it till it shows up yeah drop it's your money here bag. you're gonna pick a bag up there no, no there's no dropping money i mean you have your money in your hand usually oh yeah you shake their hand i've bought way more drugs than dan huh. or been involved and you always meet the person because you're not going to drop money somewhere and pick it up somewhere else you need to see that person you need to see their drugs you always have to have someone on your team that is a drug professional <laughs> hey we they, came here to pick they up measure they weigh they inspect well, like they're like hey they're like we're uh 60 pounds for a quarter mm -hmm. all right cool now this is kb and the person says say yeah, yeah man it's kb this is all good stuff and then your guy has to check it out open it feel it and smell it man this is dirt dude this is dirt you sure you're showing us for 60 this should be 40 bucks on the street oh man this is a negotiation this is, this is a good one yeah yeah and you're dealing with someone who's not in the law like you're dealing you're an outlaw you're literally buying something illegally there's no there's no anything there's no buyer beware or, or there is buyer beware if you buy oregano like this happens to a lot of like white nerdy whatever that buy it they're like yeah, here's your here's my eighty bucks, sir. And he's like, here's your oregano. I mean, weed. Here you go, kids. It's gonna be and even when you got it, I don't know what percentages or no way to test it. Like you could be getting ten percent THC from this item, and smoking it and coughing and smoking. By the way, do you know what you can smoke weed out of? Literally anything. Yes. <laughs> you could smoke weed out of a honey bear, like the the bear that. Gives you honey. You pour honey out of a bear. Smoked weed out of one. Oh, yeah. You smoke weed out of an apple. A candy an cane. Apple. A candy cane. Christmas candy, candy cane. cane. Like uh, the ones you that weed you, out of a candy you put cane? lights inside. Oh, okay. They're much larger than – I wish you could hollow out the inside of a candy cane. You can smoke weed out of a gold – An apple. Yeah. by professionals. You can smoke weed out of tinfoil. just shaped like a bowl. You can smoke weed out of anything. A it's bubbler. Incredible. Yeah. There's another Gravity name for bomb. it. I forget. Gravity bomb. Gravity bomb. That's you. Um, anyway, you can smoke weed of all these things. It's like people find a way to do it. We're moving to a time where you can order your weed, percentage THC, percentage sapphire versus mm -hmm. indica. I'm going to say the words Indica. Because I don't do it. Sure. You can get it delivered to your house. It's 100% proof whatever percentages you wanted. Yep. And then you can smoke it out of the most advanced bubbler or vaporizer <laughs> you have. And it's wild to me that it's going to be so pure and so easy to get and so much better than anything people got 
20, 30 years ago that it's going to maybe, I don't want to say lead to problems, but it's different. So what is going to happen to like the illegality of it? The people that are doing it, slinging it on the streets, are they going to become professionals at this point? I know some of them are. Some of them some are will, just like spinning it into an actual company. Other ones are probably just getting forced out. If anything, it's saving the government money because then they can tax that transaction. And also, half the people are quitting. They can, the yeah. illegal act. Mm-hmm. And they can monitor it. Mm-hmm. And make sure that you're getting a product that is not tainted. The only people that will still do it are people who are getting it way under market value and then Black, selling yeah. it at way under the retail cost, yep. Yep. tax free. Right. Yeah. But will that even be a thing? I don't know. I mean, is the government taxing it so much that you're cheaper to buy it from a guy on the street? I have no idea. I don't know. That's what all these companies are doing. They're mass producing it in a way that's done automated. It's automated and it should be cheaper. They're going to make it so that it's produced at such a low price that it forces out all those people that are growing it themselves, picking it by hand, it packaging it by hand. Like it's it's going to be a revolution. It's going to be the exact same thing as the craft beer revolution. Yeah. Like you could have a shitty weed production company that really is skimming off the top making it so cheap but it's so low THC but it's also so kind of crappy but also so easy to get Mm -hmm. you're going to have companies that come in and they're like we're hand drawn our marijuana (laughs) we cut this this bud is called this we mix it with blueberry mango and you're going to go bazongas like it's going to be literally like the craft beer club people are only going to smoke certain strands out of certain pipes or something i don't know it's gonna be a thing so if it were legal and in mm-hmm. pennsylvania it is to medically it's not oh, medically. medically but if it were le- if it rec- recreationally legal would you do it would it be a consistent thing or would you just like ignore it um i guess i i don't care it's for the podcast but one of my um top 10 goals was always smoke with my dad and listen to some of our favorite music together but he would never do it, but one day before he dies, I'd want to do it with him. It's like I, like my dad would like to listen to Boston. Oh, Boston is cool. I would listen to a Boston song. I um through the years, I constantly think of a playlist I would listen to with my dad if we did. You like, get it ready. Uh, Dial it up. Oh, dude, the, 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 I have the playlist. It just changes every now and then because I'm like, I want him to know what one of his Led Zeppelin songs sounds like. And I always figure out which one I want to use. I don't want to take too much time on one song. I'm like, let's do good times, bad times. I'm like, too old school. We need a little more production value. I'm like, four sticks? I'm like, it's too obscure. I'm like, we're not doing Stairway or any of the stupid songs like that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Lemon Song. My dad would appreciate the fudge out of that. Then I'm like, he likes Tool, but he's not a big like Tool head. Mm. I'm like 46 and 2. My dad, if he heard 46 and 2 like this, he'd have a... And then I'm like, let's go back to something old school. Then you got to go to something weird. My dad likes I'm like, he likes Dave Matthews. I'm like, dad, you got to hear Two Step Live in New York. Go for it. Central Park. He'd be like, I don't know. I'd be like... Dave Matthews. Mm-hmm. That concert. I went to... There's people smoking weed in the in the stands. It's just like oh my god, dude! Everywhere they it around there. Yeah, it's such a, a loving really vibe. Mm-hmm. That's another thing is that the people who smoke weed have this vibe of like compassion love. and love. There is it's and sharing. Yeah, it's, it is different. Yeah, it, I don't know any other drug that really makes you that personable. Fifty percent of the time, drinking is like that. But uh, like share the, the drink. End. Hey, you can have my beer. You can have my liquor. You yeah. can have this. But the other fifty percent of the people are saying, "I'm going to fight you for no reason. Rage. I will slash your tires for no reason. Yes. I will throw a glass bottle at your face, and I don't even know you." So yeah, <laughs> it's weird. And it's an interesting drug. It is, and I don't know why it's a class one. Yeah, I don't. Even after trying CBD mm-hmm. from hemp derived sources, to clarify, um, I felt like maybe like it, it feels like it could be a cure all, but I don't want to do it consistently. 
And also, sure. I don't want the THC, the potential content, whether it is or is not in there, because I don't really know, to show up on a drug test if it ever comes up. Like, I don't want it so to affect my well-being. What if what if um, drug tests were illegal? So if you could never long if you could no longer test for THC, I would probably do it every now and then. The bottle that I they got are. has like probably two hundred drops in it, so it's gonna take you like three years. To yeah, it. it would take at least years. You don't double up drops, dude. Have you ever tried double drop? And I mean, it's not I gonna kill me. Drug. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The um, it's funny you said that. Uh, Double drop. Oh. What I think it's cool with is like if you stayed up late and played video games or something or listen to music, it's yeah. a very I more don't free time. It. Some people treat it like a social drug. I don't. Huh. From what I would guess. I don't know. I do become I less talkative, yes. but more enjoyable. I have a friend, I have a friend who we both know who only tried it like three times, right? And when he did it, he came down the steps and he felt funny. He was like, he was high. Oh my God. Aren't you okay? And he came down the steps and he, um, all his friends were there. He was just hanging with everybody, doing his normal thing. And the thing that occurred to him is that he wasn't funny. And he couldn't tell a good joke. <laughs> it really bothered him. And he was like, Ugh. <laughs> and it, he doesn't do it anymore. And I was like, why? And he's like, I couldn't. Tell my funny joke. Is he snarky? Like, is that are his jokes snarky? Do they require a no, bitterness? No, no. This person is a big Star Wars fan. Loves them. <laughs> but he tried it like once or twice, and he couldn't be funny, and that was his big sticking point. And he was like, he was over it. And I realized in my head, like, yeah, you're not as funny. Probably you're not as sharp. Yeah. You're in your own head, looking at a million things, doing a million things. I think what I hinted at was the dependency. It's like I wouldn't want to become dependent on anything because I feel like yeah, you wouldn't want to have my, it for me. Yeah, my normal self is good, and I don't need to improve it. Every now and then, like maybe, but I don't want to be sure. Yeah, dependent on it. Recreational, recreational. Here and there, every now and then. I like that. Now, what do you think of people who smoke every day? And that looks like it's a dependency and an addiction. So it's not physical. So like, is that them not mental dependency? I think mental dependency yeah. is more prevalent, actually. Oh, totally, it's a thing. It's like it seems sad because there's probably so this is like the uh, the self righteous like you could have a better life if you didn't do this thing. Like that could be anything that society deems like unnatural. So like if you didn't take these oils or smoke weed, like you could be a more productive citizen or something. Like I don't really possible. care that people are not productive. <laughs> it might bite us in the ass as a country in the future, but as long as you're not harming anybody. So I don't see an issue with it. Like it's sad that you might not be the best person you could be or maybe you don't get to a point where i've seen friends that don't like don't get a strong job they don't yeah they don't move away they don't try to further themselves they don't try to educate themselves further they don't try to start a family eventually yeah eventually they're gonna look back and say i could have done better with my my life and maybe that's the part that is depressing if they ever stop taking it. Or Possibly. At real station. I, I will say something I've learned from this exact podcast is that all life is meaningless. I don't care what you do with your time. I don't care if you start a great family and have a super big successful life. It's all shit in the end, I guess. So you're a nihilist. Yeah. A happy one. An optimistic nihilist. nihilist. Yeah. Isn't it funny that I'm the nihilist and, and you're – and but I'm the – the optimist too. What am I? You heard the pessimist. Remember, and you always say, "No, I'm the realist." You say it every time. That is, I guess, that is true. <laughs> so I'm the optimist, but also the nihilist who sees the shit in life. And you're like, "No, no, no, I'm just a realist." Yes. So I guess we need we need to smoke weed together. That's what you're saying. Do a little oil in a state that no. it, where it's legal, like oh, Nevada, weed. Las Vegas. 
smoke of that ganja, folks. We're going to get chronic. We're going to get so dopey dope. Oh, that's sticky icky. Why dope. did you do that for your uh, your bot in Clash of Clans? What? Oh, 420? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, um, it was that song. There's a song. Oh, is there? And are those the exact lyrics? See, I didn't know. Yeah, I think so. I like it. It's weird because I like I like those types those of songs. songs. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. I surprised learned a lot about everything here. Yeah. What did we learn about? Um legality? Yeah. Medical legality. Totally different things. Don't get them confused, folks. Yeah. Thirty three states, oh, ten states. Hold on. Illinois. Yeah. I think Illinois just became the eleventh state, actually. Illinois is on the list. Ooh. Yeah. Um, kind of a dial. <laughs> you didn't say it right either. You said dial. Dial, doil. D I O L. Kind of a doil. Kind of a doil. Kind of a doil. Kind of a doil. I bet dare you to say the other one. Tetracarbon, whatever. I don't know what it is. Hydro, hydro, tetra. THC. What else did we learn? The different names of weed. Can't pronounce them. Can't say the purple haze. I feel like we missed some good ones, like Misty Mountain High or something. I don't mm, know. That sounds like one. <clears throat> Could be. Our song. Ding, 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 ding. So um, national legislation. Talk about the billions of dollars that the government is missing on taxing. And wasting on arresting people who do. That's yeah. a double whammy. Oh, absolution. Nancy, Nancy Reagan. Suck my... War on drugs. The war on drugs. Maybe a little misguided. Maybe anti-black. Against African Americans. They're Hmm. way more likely to be arrested for the same crime. Opioid epidemic. I'm just... You're going to stop me, but just saying. Yeah. It's anti-African American. No, it's like a a large percentage of the population in prison are African American. Yeah. Yeah, for... Crimes that are minor, yeah. I was going to say, meanwhile, there are like all these memes or like jokes where like a white person's like, I'm just trying to start a marijuana company. And it's like, "Mm, there's a lot of African Americans in jail because of this, but we're going to do a special on you for trying to start up your own mom and pop weed shop. I think that's called cultural appropriation, sir. I'm not going to go there. Repatriation, reparations. Hmm, maybe. <sighs> we talked about uh, key words are lacking. Alzheimer's, in this. appetite loss, cancer, Crohn's disease, eating disorders, epilepsy, glaucoma, mental health, namely schizophrenia yeah. and PTSD, multiple sclerosis, muscle spasms, nausea, and pain. Arthritis, digestion, anxiety, That's stress. Pain. Sleep. That's under disorders. That's under, oh, oh, I didn't get stress. Good. Terpenes. They didn't talk about terpenes. What's terpenes? It's a group of volatile, unsaturated hydrocarbons found in essential oils of plants. Oh, shit. Oh, damn. We got a good one there. <laughs> they say that about weed, too. Marijuana has terpenes in it that are like the omega-3s and stuff of the plant world. Exciting. Exciting. Yeah. Exciting. That's going to be the next you wave. You know what we should do? Hold What's on. that? I think I have really old tar. Tar? In my garage. Psychoreactive oh, yeah. tar? It, no, it's like, um, it's derived from the marijuana plant. Um, Class one? It's like the, it's like the, the sticky high THC content stuff. That really? Can, like, yeah, you're supposed to like smoke it in a weird way. I can smoke it right here on the podcast. Let's do it. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. That can't be legal. No, it's too late in the day. Sorry, folks. I don't yeah. have it. Never heard of it. Yep. Yeah. Class one drugs. Opioids. Class one friggin' drug. Do you know if they figured out a way to um, DUI test for THC yet? They can. I don't know. About, if they draw your blood. Which you're not supposed to allow them to do. You're supposed to tell them to not do it. Yeah, let me see my lawyer. And hope to God. Yeah. 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 And but they can't take test for CBD. 
and you can't die of CBD or THC, supposedly. Don't take our word on that, but double check. And uh, my son watched the end pandas and just took all the THC. Hey, we God. all need <laughs> I can't imagine just the whole bottle. Holy God. Sue those bastards. I think the oil is where it is. I mean, if you're going to make anything with like, you could, you could have like a jug of it. Like it'd be vegetable oil. You could replace vegetable oil with it. Oh my God. Drink a whole gallon of THC. Oh my God. Anyway, we have a lot of fans out there. If you want to make a fan video, film yourself drinking two gallons of CBD. Oh, just send it to us. You will be fine. And we will laugh so much. Don't. Don't. We're joking. Life we'll the record show. Trademark. The Unpanners. Serious. Joke. The joke being don't do it. So we covered everything. We talked about Canada. We talked about the crime rate, how it's gone down. Colorado, the crime rate has gone down. The pizza order has gone up. Munchies. Munchies. Um, <clears throat> and for the record, me and Dan might actually try marijuana for the first time. When it becomes legal in our state. so That sounds fantastic. If you think we did it, judging by our converse, we didn't. We're waiting till it becomes legal. What so was the... Um, could be cool. Like, we need to get that uh, Indian munchy food, that, like, hot tomato. Oh, my God. Oh, that was good. Yeah, that was so good. Burn my butthole the next day. <laughs> yes. It did. It was really good, though. I'll have to watch that episode. Everyone at home, watch the International the Food we, Box. Uh, international food. We tried all these different foods. Hmm. Our buttholes burn so good the next day. Too much sugar. Probably, but, but it was. It could have been why the Indian stuff, spicy but, tomatoes were so good. Yeah, but no, that was like the third thing on the uh, list, dude. I think we kept munching on it. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Folks, we like you. We like you a lot. Thanks for tuning in. Um, if you need any hints, any help, any advice, if you've ever tried marrow, what's it called? Marijuana? The Marijuana. Drug? Put something down in the comments. Let us know. Seriously. I, we've yet to try it. So we're thinking of it one day when it's legal. We'd like to hear your advice. We'd like to hear your input. We'd like to hear what you say. We'd like to have your money. You put it in our Patreon. Just stick it right there. Boom. You're good. Thanks for tuning in. Seriously. I think we covered everything. Thanks. Thanks. We like it, folks. We like it a lot. Good night.